We are uh, Green Steps. We are an online auction house. Uh, we've been selling art for five years, mostly all in art. We held the first uh, NFT auction in India in January. Uh, when I held it, um, I was quite worried about the legal consequences of it because uh, uh, the laws weren't very clear. And so we decided that, look, the simplest thing to do is sell an NFT, but accept fiat currency only. So a lot of people don't realize this, but there may not be a linkage between crypto and NFT. In the sense, you can go to wearable or a NFT gateway or OpenSea. You can take out your credit card and you can actually buy an NFT. You don't necessarily have to have crypto to buy it. You can, of course, link your MetaMask Plus wallet and uh, make a crypto transaction. But if you don't have it, then the exchange will pay the gas fees for you and give you an NFT. Of course, what you need is a, a wallet address. So crypto connection will not be there. Using exactly this, we did the first NFT auction in Germany, and I'll talk about it. But anyway, moving forward. Uh, so what is an NFT and what NFTs to collect? Um, <clears throat> the important here, the important thing here is to talk about art. As I said, we're gonna restrict ourselves to art, we got other forms of smart contracts. Uh, these are some of the works that we sold in the past as a Manjit Bawa, as a Balaka Bare, these works are for growers. Uh, this was our bread and butter, and this is a type of art sold in the past. Point being, when we talk about NFTs also, let's talk about the art. Next slide. Uh, let's just back up a bit. I mean, people, when people talk about NFTs, everybody's talking about uh, flipping it the next day. And then I'm going to buy something, I'm going to flip it, it seems to be some sort of a get rich quick scheme. And when you start collecting art, and even in the physical art space, it's the same thinking. You know, I'm going to buy art, I'm going to flip it. It's, it's actually not that easy. Buying art, you can pay transaction costs, you buy from a traditional auction house. We would be down 35% on day one because uh, we would have charged you at least 25 35% you know, right at the end of the transaction. It is not necessarily an investment uh, vehicle. I mean, of course, there's a lot of money to be made, but if you approach it purely from an investment angle, you look at the stakes. Uh, it's a trillion dollar market. Even before the advent of digital art, NFTs, where everybody knows about today because we uh, media attention around crypto and all the crashes, all the falls, and all the increases, all the shootups. Even before all that, art was still a trillion dollar market. Uh, very interesting to human society, something we want to own, something that has an aesthetic, something that we want to put up on our walls. It's a recognition of human creativity. That's a very important point to note. Um, in physical art, there is something called decorative art and modern art. What well, the decorative art basically means something you like putting up on your walls, but have may not have a single PSI investment value. What that means you spend your fifty thousand dollar lakh to buy that artwork. After you buy it, you cannot resell that. So not all artwork is resellable. Not art, all artwork is investment grade. Not all artwork is collectible grade. There has to be some recognition of creativity. There has to be something new. Uh, we cannot really argue with the need for art. I mean, this is not something new we're talking about. Art is not a new market. It's been there for hundreds of years. Again, trillion dollar market. Next slide, please. If you look at art, there have been many movements. Uh, Impressionism, Monet, Cubism, Picasso, uh, Pop Art, and the Warhol. I mean, these are the, I guess, the very common names that I'm just throwing out there. Uh, Formism, Matisse, Surrealism, Dali. Uh, abstract Expressionism, you have heard all the names, uh, 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 Pollock, Post Impressionism, obviously Van Gogh in there. The point is that these are all periods of uh, periods of change and periods of new thinking and periods of creativity that, that a bunch of artists have brought them together as a community and given their own shape or form or uh, an aesthetic to that particular movement. And they have been done in similar times. Like generally speaking, Cubism started around 1908 and continued until 1940. Abstract expressions <laughs> started in the US around the 1940s, and it was kind of very prevalent for the next few years. 
always were again uh, uh, Matisse, you know, like the tens again, and there were a few artists that focused on that trend at that time. So again, the point to note is uh, that art has movements, and art is about creativity. All of these guys have made something new, something different, something that is recognizable as a group, but it is an extension of the uh, of the art. Uh, language of art that was prevalent before. They have made changes to the expression or how they talk about something or how they show something. And that is crucial to understand. So art cannot be bought in isolation or art cannot be thought about in isolation. It's not just a good piece of art. It belongs to a movement, it belongs to a group of artists, it belongs to somebody who has made something creative. Next slide, please. Those are the Western ones in India also. Uh, there's early Indian art, there's medieval art, I see Pankhan there, there's Mughal and colonial era art, there's modern contemporary art. Even the, inside modern contemporary art, there are various movements. There's, you know, the uh, local school, there's the Calcutta group, there's the progressives, there's the artists from Kolhapur, there's the Cholamantalam. So, again, a lot of different genres and groups of artists have been identified and of course, what is important about that identification is that they identify a creative movement. They don't identify a copied movement, they identify a creative movement. Something has gone ahead in the way people talk about things. And uh, the Western and the Indian groups uh, uh, can influence each other. It's not that the Indian groups are just influenced from our own uh, natural history or that they are as well. Been inspired from the West, the artists who been inspired from uh, older Indian art, the artists who been inspired from older Indian art and artists from the West. So creativity is, does not follow the rules. Creativity is uh, something that is, uh, you know, cannot be boxed in, cannot have a set of rules. Please to add to the complexity, uh, Art is made in various mediums. So we spoke about the kind of art that is made. Uh, it could be made with oil, acrylic, watercolor, graphite pencils, color pencils, collage, terracotta, found objects. Uh, and the last one is photography. As you can see, we're slowly getting to the digital part of it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, it is made of different mediums. Or paintings can be made on canvas, it can, art can be made on wood, on glass, pottery, proper, concrete, plaster, clay. So you have different genres, you have uh, different uh, types of paint being used, you have different supporting structures in which the paint is applied for uh, the expression. So you can get an idea of how complex this area uh, uh, is becoming. Uh, next slide, please. One of the earliest digital art, um, are there any questions at this point? Yeah. One of the interesting things that a lot of people ignore when they say, oh, NFT started a revolution in 2017, yes, maybe, but the concept of digital art essentially started around the time photography first came into being. Uh, we are seeing on the top. Uh, Ansel Adams is very popular in the US. And in India, of course, we see Nasreen Mohamedi. I'm not included in Raja Dindiral, because they essentially uh, uh, took photographs at a very early time, of course, but they took exact photographs. It wasn't, uh, they weren't trying to express an abstraction or express something different than what the realistic image that they saw. Uh, so we see Nasreen Mohamedi trying to uh, create her abstract works of art through almost photography, and it started back in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. Again, photography as a digital medium or as a digital art form has existed for a while. So, digital art. Um, we're slowly going over it specifically to NFTs. Digital art has existed since the 90s. And I remember in 97, uh, I was in the US at that time, and uh, I attended a seminar uh, by an artist called Bill Viola, uh, who was really known as a video artist. What that meant is that he used to make his artworks uh, and sell them in VHS uh, tapes. It would be a five second or 10 second video of some event or some artwork. And uh, he would, uh, you know, experiment and 
can see an example next to the slide. Right, so again, this is not 2017, this is 2001. I mean, there are other examples that go as back as early 90s. So this is a digital art that existed in 2001, way before the crypto craze. I mean, cryptos, like I think the first white paper came in 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bitcoin started trading around 2011 or 12. NFTs, of course, uh, 2017. Here we talk about a digital art that was made in 2001. Uh, very successful. Uh, this guy sells for millions right now. Next, please. Here's another example of a video. So, uh, again, a five second or a 10 second video. Can you imagine in 2001, uh, the digital tools were actually quite new? So, creating something like this was not easy. Uh, this took a lot of work. I mean, creating a five second video like this was. Uh, an extreme amount of work and uh, not just work. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to look at the composition, how the work has come about, look at the aesthetic. And there's something about this you can keep it, you know, on your, uh, <coughs> keep it on your, you know, as a composer. It's, it's, it's art, it's not kitsch, it's, it's absolute art. He's recognized as a modernist painter, uh, uh, and he was doing this in 2001. Next slide, please. And this is a gallery showing of his, uh, where you can see various artworks on a video screen. Uh, you know, you'll go to a dark room where you can see uh, screens that move about like when the camera is panning, but you can see the various images. This happened way before the advent of NFTs or, or the current race today. The point I'm trying to make is that digital art has been there for a while. It's not something that was made yesterday. It's been there for almost two decades before NFT came into view. Uh, next slide, please. So, but, but how do they sell them? They sold them with, uh, there would be editions of 10. They would make 10 VHS cassettes and sell everyone to a different uh, collector. And the collector's names would be put in a ledger. <coughs> uh, a ledger like a standard uh, gallery ledger where there would be like edition one goes to so and so, edition two goes to so and so, and so on and so forth. And in case a VHS tape was sold, then the new buyer would have to confirm with the gallery that, look, hey, I'm buying edition two, which is a, a video cassette which has a number two on it for this particular artwork. Uh, firstly, am I buying it from the right person? Does he own it? And secondly, can you please transfer the person's name in uh, the, your ledger? To me now, because I'm buying. So that is the gallery's job to maintain a ledger of who owned the artworks, and the artworks were disseminated using VHS tapes or other 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 mediums. Similarly, the artworks were uh, once a CD or a DVD player came, the artworks could disseminate with CD or a DVD player. The problem with this approach, of course, is that let's say you load out your VHS uh, tape to a friend of yours. Hey, take a look at this. I put it up. They can make a copy with a high fidelity, right? So <clears throat> the problem with digital art, generally speaking, is that copies can be made with high fidelity. You can have a physical art, you can have a Hussein, you can have a Picasso on a canvas, but making a copy with high fidelity is very difficult. If people make uh, copies, but it is extremely difficult to uh, make an exact copy of the original artwork, whereas in digital space, it's just control C, control V. Right? So, next slide, please. Enter smart contracts. So, what do smart contracts do? They are solving not the, they're not creating new art. Digital art has existed for almost two decades. So, it's not that they're creating new art or a new art form. What they're doing is solving the problem of who owns this artwork and the fact that the ledger is now a part of the blockchain. It's uh, this whole ledger which was there at somebody's gallery is now on the internet. There are various consensus mechanisms to see how they're updated. And the entire information as to who owns this artwork or how many editions of this artwork exist are on a blockchain. That is the technology that NFT brings about. That is the game changer. So it is 
I'm going to pause for a question after I said. All right. Uh, basically, as it says, NFTs are like plain tickets, they're all look the same, but I have a different seal destination. It's kind of a, it, it, it has the ownership, the blockchain has the ownership information, and it says how many editions exist. And more importantly, the transfer can happen instantaneously. Next, uh, next slide, please. So I want to focus on a particular movement that is driving most of us uh, crazy uh, because of the crazy valuations that, have, uh, uh, that it has seen. And again, I want to categorize it as a digital art movement. Um, as I mentioned to you at the beginning, art has many movements. We had Impressionism, we had you know, Formism, we had Abstract Expressionism, and even in India, there were various groups that were made. Similarly, in digital art, uh, there are are uh, digital art post the NFTs, there are quite a few movements that have come about. One of them that has caught the fancy of a lot of people is what I call the profile picture project or social icons. So much so that companies like Twitter or Instagram are probably gonna allow you to link your MetaMask wallet and they will search the list of NFTs that you have and then you can legitimately use one of the NFTs on the social media uh, as your social media icon. That's, that's like the new uh, halves, if you may. Uh, going ahead. <clears throat> this was the, one of the first projects that came by. It's called CryptoPunks. Uh, in digital art, size really doesn't matter. I mean, you're seeing this CryptoPunk on a huge screen right now. You can see on a 30 inch by 40 inch screen. You can see on a 20 inch by 30 inch screen. You can be a, this could be a social icon. This could be your you know, small little social icon. But this was one of the first uh, projects to become successful, and it started around 2017. And again, I call this a profile picture project, um, and I call this a, a movement in art, a movement in uh, digital art, rather. Let's move ahead. A lot of people initially, I was asked this question, oh, you know, it's butt bath and crypto and so on and so forth. Um, the blue line, uh, that we see is the price of the average price of the crypto pump in the last two or three months. And we can see that it kind of hasn't fallen much beyond 40 or 50 uh, ETH, which is the standard trading, uh, <coughs> which is the standard uh, 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 cryptocurrency that these things are coded in. The point I'm trying to say that my price of Ethereum has fallen this year. But the price of these NFTs as quoted in it has been relatively stable. Next slide, please. And in fact, if you look at the last 30 days, uh, I'm just looking at outputs from this uh, site called OpenSea. Uh, it's probably the number one site where NFTs are traded. And in fact, if you look at uh, <coughs> the top 10 or 20 NFTs that are traded, some have gone up in value by 135%, 84%, 167%. The point to note is that there is a dis that, that I would say a disconnect, but an NFT is not cryptocurrency. An NFT is a smart contract that has an underlying asset. In this case, we're talking about art. While a lot of cryptocurrency has been slammed on the market, some of the popular NFT products have Held, held their prices reasonably. I mean, a lot of them have only a little five, ten percent, whatever, but they've held their prices. Why? Because the market is saying that look, 2017, from an art perspective, is like four years or three years down the road, uh, three years history, and it is nothing when you look at you know hundreds of years of art history. I mean, it's something brand new. So imagine a new movement that's just imagine Cubism is just starting out. In, in, in 1908, if you were able to get one of those uh, uh, pictures of, you know, from Picasso or any of the others that made those cubist images in, say, 1911, that is the kind of analogy uh, people are making and partly the reason why they haven't bought, fallen in value that much. Any questions? The question is that uh, there's only one Picasso, right? However, like, uh, 
profile picture that art that you just showed could be made by someone else maybe to like 95 96% accuracy and um, you know could launch could be launched in the market that is a very good question so how is the scarcity I, I, maintained i almost fear that uh, you have somehow hacked my computer and see my next few slides mm -hmm. uh, which you have not but uh, <laughs> so that's a very good question you're basically saying that look picasso is very unique you can make out his style and you can't come up with another uh, son of picasso artist tomorrow that copies the same style and then you know ask him for the same one evaluation because again we're talking about creativity i mean that is something i want to stress about it's not about Art is about recognizing a movement. Art is about recognizing creativity. That's what it is. If it's a copied art, that is considered to be kitsch. That's considered to be decorative. That has no value. Uh, can we just move ahead? Uh, this is, if you can open C, you will see that this is the page of CryptoPunks. And uh, of course, you'll see a blue tick there. Now, that's when it becomes very complicated because what happened, uh, CryptoPunks, when they were first released, there was an error in their code. And uh, they uh, released I mean, thousands of CryptoPunks with, with, an, with an error, and then they realized that there's an error. And then they dropped version 2 of CryptoPunks to all those people. The problem being in the blockchain, you can't delete. There's no, no such thing as destroying an artwork. It is there on the art. It is there on the blockchain. Next slide, please. So we have. People, uh, big guys, programmers who looked at the original release of CryptoPunks, uh, saw the errors, wrapped it, and then relaunched it. The problem here is that it also has a blue tick, even though their company, Larva Labs, has complained that this is not uh, our original work. The problem this has a blue tick is because for some amazing reason, they themselves have sold in the market these V1 crypto punks, making the issue a bit like you can't sell something and then right after selling it say it is not legitimate. So they have kind of shot themselves in the foot. Point being, next slide please. It's not just crypto punks V1, there's crypto funks. Uh, and if you look at the fine print, It'll, it'll say that uh, not Larva Labs. So they're not pretending to be Larva Labs, but they are almost identical copies of the first project that was made. Next slide, please. There's unofficial punks. I mean, this thing goes on. This goes exactly to the question that you're asking. What if somebody copies these? <clears throat> what I'm trying to stress is that uh, in buying NFTs, uh, research is needed to make sure you buy something that is original, that is something that is creative. While these things are selling in the market, unfortunately, you don't know exactly how they're selling it or who's buying it. You don't know if the prices are concocted. Uh, you don't know what the history is going to be five years down the road. The point is exactly that. I mean, you cannot copy, you cannot uh, uh, buy. Uh, 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 Let's say you're interested in an FOSAN, but then you say, hey, uh, I'm going to buy an artist who makes horses almost identical, but uh, uh, he's somebody different, and so I'm going to get it one tenth of the price. They never survive. I mean, because again, it's the recognition of the creativity. Scroll next, please. In addition, there are other pixelated uh, products that have come out. This is it's called the 10th Street Terriers. And to add to the complexity, not all NFTs are sold on Ethereum. This particular one, I think, is sold on Solana, if I'm not mistaken, which is another blockchain. There are other blockchains on which NFTs are sold. So not only do you have to, uh, and some of them, and some of them trade on very prestigious websites like Rarible, Nifty Gateway, I and mean, then. You will open sees one of the top four or five, but then there are three or four others. So you will see these other projects in uh, using other blockchains in other uh, 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 in other uh, websites. The point again is that uh, before rushing to buy anything, one needs to do one's research because what is of relevance here is the original CryptoPunks project. All of these others are lookalikes. It's not very clear how long they are not made, they will last, how long the speculative activity will last. And certainly, whenever 
there is a downturn, there's always a call to uh, uh, push the quality. And it's all the original products that remain in uh, high values that all these others fall. Next please. Of course, in India, uh, we couldn't uh, uh, not be uh, out of this. So even Amitabh Bachchan created the Amitabh uh, Bachchan Park. Uh, interestingly enough, this was sold by a company registered, God knows where. Uh, six editions were sold, nobody. And I believe there was a lot of human cry because it wasn't done in the right way, and there was some ED action, and Amitabh Bachchan returned the rumors that he returned whatever money he got, including penalties, not wanting to deal with any issues. So, in NFTs, again, we come to a point of, of course, copyright and uh, legalities as to where or who's issuing these NFTs. When I say copyright, I'm going to just throw these two buzzwords. One is called an NFT license. What that means is that you own, uh, you can use the image for your own commercial interest up to say $100,000, but the IP still remains with the creators of the project. So, next slide, please. Okay, just going to returns. Um, this is a return profile of one of the uh, products, I think it's called Board A Yacht Club. Uh, we can see that in May 21, it's almost zero ETH, and even now it's almost like a, a, a hundred ETH or so. Uh, with all the markets tanking, and some of these investments have to have been the most uh, fruitful investments ever. Uh, of course, I have to say I'm cherry picking. I'm cherry picking the best products. And the point being that NFTs have survived and NFTs have done well. Next slide, please. So, again, returns can be huge. Uh, art, NFT, it has become a stock. What NFT is about, about is that I can start trading them every five minutes, 10 times a day, 20 times a day, 30 times a day. Uh, it's a tradable asset. You don't have to go to a gallery anymore. You sit online, you start trading them, you link your MetaMask wallet, just a couple of clicks, and the trading happens. Uh, complexities exist. I mean, complexities exist galore. Uh, what is the copyright? Uh, who owns the copyright of this? Uh, will the product ever be sold? Will the copyright ever be sold to somebody else? Uh, what can I do with the image? Can I actually make uh, clothing or can I make uh, a movie from the image? Do I own the copyright? You almost need to go and research uh, the, uh, and read the fine print basically. It's not just, it's, it's no longer fun, it's serious money. You have to read the fine print. You need to understand what the copyright looks like. It is art at the end of the day, whether physical, digital, Art, whatever the issues are, the same. It's about recognizing good art. It's about buying art that has the copyright, where the artist is recognized, and avoiding any of the uh, scams that are happening, any of the for any of the uh, replicas and copycats. The point is that the curator's eye is very important. Um, the standard mantra that applies to becoming a good collector, research, read, be part of communities, visit museums, meet art criticism, it's exactly the same. There's no difference. In fact, with all the Discord and Telegram groups, it's become easier to research and read because all the discussions on the new uh, art that has been made is all online. Next slide, please. Uh, we were the first auction house in India to auction NFTs. Interestingly enough, what we did is that we found an artist, believe it or not, in the 1950s who had made an avatar like project. Uh, uh, what's a good example? Like this image here, I think this says Hilda, and this image here says Orphan. So in the 1950s, somebody had completely stepped away from realism and made uh, uh, caricatures, if you may, uh, very simple. Uh, uh, very simple artworks that denoted uh, expression or a characteristic or a trait. And this was in the 1950s. So what we did is that we worked with the estate and we did an auction where we had lot number one, the physical artwork, lot number two, the digital artwork, the NFT, the unique printed NFT. Um, and that is the first NFT auction in India, early January 2022. 
No cryptocurrency exception, only fair currency. Of course, it's sold out. Uh, on an average, around uh, 20,000 rupees each, which was about as high at that time. They've all been just uh, listed on OpenSea. Uh, but the point is, uh, as soon as this project was done, I've heard in the last two weeks, David Hurst has also launched a physical digital project where he has put around 1,000 works of his in a vault and minted unique editions of uh, the same artworks. And the buyer can decide whether which one he wants to trash. Does he want to destroy the digital version or does he want to destroy the physical version Version being left only with the, the digital one? Almost identical in concept. So, I mean, that's generally the gist of what I have to say. Uh, the point being that the originals of Rain's is where it came. They were in the same option. The originals? Yeah. And so, lot number one was the original, lot two was the NFT, lot three was the original. So, price and price. They went for five, six times more than the digital ones. And they're all the That's it. But what was interesting is that they didn't all go to the same people. I would have thought that somebody would have bought the physical and the digital. But it seemed the interest was different. I mean, some people only bought physical artworks, and some people only bought digital artworks. So, this is your auction house. That's right. Things. And you sell physical and digital. That's right. Based in the yes. And just our auction house. Just art. And we plan to be doing a lot more with NFTs. Only in India. Only as of now, only in India. Right. And how long is that? So, um, I basically want to make a point that you know it's not a craze. It's at the end of the day, it's still art. It's just art. So even when you look at crypto punks, it has a place in art history. It has a place as a movement, as a digital profile picture, as one of the first people to come up with a pixelated story. Uh, I'll give you the back actually uh, as a pixelated story. Uh, yeah, so this is a movement. This is a uh, this is a movement. In this movement, there will be many people who will do original stuff, but then there will be many copycats as well, and they are to be avoided. And it's not a question of movement, there's other issues when it comes to NFTs. Who was the copyright? For example, the copyright for CryptoPulse was held by Lambda Labs, which is then sold to Yuga Labs, which is the owner of the Board Ape Yacht Club. So, uh, you as an owner of a CryptoPulse cannot really do much with it. There's some gray areas, which is why this project has fallen a little bit out of fancy, but still being the number one project, it sells for a lot. But the board in your club has kind of taken over because you get a board in, you want the copyright, you can do whatever you want with it. People are uh, 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 starting up VC firms for holders of board in your club, uh, 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 for people who hold that artwork so that they can, those characters can be used in their films or, or, or movies. So that means if you buy a board in your club, you own the copyright. So there's a lot of nuances. Secondly, what change is the song? I had a question. What format does an NFT come in? What format does an NFT come in? The question, uh, what does that mean? As in, is it, is it a file? Do you need to have a certain uh, wallet or a dashboard? So, the simplest way of uh, uh, doing it. So, I'm going to use some buzzwords here. One is decentralized, which means you have a MetaMask wallet. You open up, you go to this uh, Chrome browser, you click on MetaMask add on. Uh, you create an Ethereum wallet address, which basically gets created with 12 words uh, that are your secret passphrase. Please don't lose that because that is your identity. If anybody else gets this 12 word passphrase, they can access your account and transfer all of your assets away to some other account. You create an Ethereum wallet address. And then with that wallet address, which looks like a, a large number, uh, starting with 0x, you send that wallet address to, so say, somebody like me or who else is an NFT, and they will transfer, that's your public key, basically, they will transfer that NFT, it's a digital asset, they will transfer that NFT to that Ethereum wallet address. 
what that means is on your MetaMask wallet, you will see your list of currencies that you own, and then another tab called NFTs. In that, you will see the list of NFTs that you own. But then how do I use it for movies or for t-shirts? So you own the NFT, right? So that information that you own the NFT is on a blockchain. You are the owner, which means, let's say you bought a board ape, you are also the copyright holder. Let's say you bought a crypto pub, you are not really the copyright holder, you can just buy and sell that particular artwork. But in the case of board apes, let's say other products, I don't want to necessarily promote board apes. But let's say you are the corporate holder, then that information is there in the blockchain. The license uh, that has been given to you is there on a website. You can go ahead and create whatever you want. And if you see anybody else doing it, you can create what's called a DMCA, you know, seize or resist or various other. Almost all countries, including India, recognize corporate, have corporate laws, a very severe corporate laws. In fact, in India, it is highly criminal to be copying something. You will, you will never see names of restaurants being copied, for example. Why? Because many of them are copyrighted. Many of the corporate laws are quite advanced. So the fact that you own the copyright is on the blockchain, okay, and it's it's for you to do whatever you want with it and uh, get after anybody else who say copies. So a very basic fundamental question to be answered is that you know. So I when I was talking about the VHS tapes, right? So some guy, an artist, made digital art and he handed out the 10 VHS tapes, that was his edition of 10, right? Somebody copied it. So the usual thing people say again, digital art is that can we copy like I think it is a thousand copies of it. Well sure, the artwork that was sold for six to nine million dollars, the people, the five thousand days of people, the guy who bought the artwork then exposed the entire artwork on his website, saying please download it, please make it your own paper. I mean, you would be shocked, you'd be aghast of why you paid seventy million dollars for this. Why are you letting everybody download for free? That's because the ownership information is there on the blockchain. Just because you've downloaded it on your computer doesn't mean you own it. The ownership information is there on the blockchain, and that is the game changer for digital artists. So that would be in the metadata. So let's say we did the uh, Google Flash avatar. So we said we are making one of one. We could have said that this is an edition of 10, in which case uh, all of those 10 would have been written to different people on the blockchain. That would be decided as per the uh, fine print that's mentioned. So now if you're bringing 10, I really doubt that you would be uh, 10 people who would operate at the same. That doesn't make any sense. So most likely, if you're only making a unique copy, where you may have the copyright, you've got to read the fine print of the offering. So the traditional rule is that the IP always remains with the artist. What a lot of people don't understand you buy an artwork. In fact, some people have screamed at me for this saying, I bought this artwork for you five years ago. You're trying to tell me that I don't own the uh, image copyright. I'm like, that's absolutely right. Image copyright remains with the artist. This is not Indian law, this is international law. Image copyright remains with the artist unless and until transfer. So you bought a physical piece of artwork, the image copyright remains with the artist. It does not come with the art. What that means is that you can, when you're listing your artwork in the future, in an auction you have an option, you can do that. That's a fair sale, fair use for sale. But if you're going to use the same image in a book way and you want to sell that book, that's a commercial usage. You will not have the authority to use that artwork commercially, even though you physically own the art. That's standard international rule. For digital, you just have to read the fine print. <laughs> so there are various licenses in the NFT space. So when the crypto box was first uh, issued, uh, they were a you know, startup, two man startup. They didn't really care or know about uh, licenses, etc. So they basically issued them, and that's all they did. Later on, people told them, hey, what about copyright? What about you know, the elephant in the room? So now they've come up with standards. One is CC0, which means you own it or you can do whatever you want. Another standard one is called NFT license, which is written by the EAP Labs. What that says is that you can do whatever you want with it up to a commercial use of $100,000, but the IP remains with the creator. 
So you can you know, make t-shirts or whatever, you know, up to some limited commercial use. It's called the NFT license. And it's a standard license that's being uh, used these days. Uh, there's also what's called CC0. So again, when it comes to digital art, you need to look into addition to the question you asked. You need to look into the copyright that is intrinsic in the art. Obviously, you want to buy a project where you want to copyright preferably. That's one of the reasons why board games became so successful because you won't be copyrighted, you've got to be what with people are creating TV serials with that art. Because you won't be art. Same as a lot of fine performance. So at least be very careful about what you're doing. So at the end of the day, all I'm trying to say is that it is art. Please look at original movements. Please talk to curators. Um, that's what we guys do when we do uh, show off there, I guess. But, uh, please talk to creators. It's about understanding art, but it's also about understanding a lot of technical legalese. It's a minefield out there. There's hundreds of projects that claim to be the original project. Please don't get uh, uh, swayed and then do your research, buy the original thing. And NFT <coughs> prices, I mean, they can go up like 1,000% in a year. I mean, it's a super investment if you do the right thing. Yeah, uh, my question is: There are a lot of uh, NFT pieces linked to communities and uh, human experiences. So, what is your opinion on this? Right. So, there are uh, uh, again. I take the use of the two largest uh, uh, NFT projects. So CryptoPunk, I don't think has any community. The board game has communities. They have given them free airdrops of others. They've given them. Portions that you could buy, and uh, your board ape will mutate a certain way. You could get a free pet dog. They've given you rights to, uh, they've created a virtual bathroom in which you can go and write on the bathroom wall. Uh, they've made it fun. So that's another change that's brought about by the digital world in the sense that uh, when you bought a physical art world, generally, I mean, I don't know of any uh, community saying I'm like the Sousa community or I'm like the Jami Roy community and let's all uh, chat, let's all create a chat group and let's, you know, go, go out together, let's go to cruise together. I don't know of any such physical communities, but the digital uh, world has been very successful in creating these uh, digital communities and certainly those utility tokens have value. And it's a great question because uh, what we are also going to do is that if you email me uh, at gallery at quinceps.com, we are going to give everyone who sends us an email a plaque, uh, an NFT for participation, which will, well, and we also help you create your metamask board and other things. And I, I got my annual son here. Uh, he's an expert in uh, creating uh, uh, metamask wallets. Uh, he probably knows more about NFTs than I do. But uh, we help you create a metamask wallet and we will send you your first NFT if you don't have it yet, which is a utility NFT. It kind of uh, says that you participated in this particular show and that will open up for future parties or discounts. I don't know what will happen in the future. But if you don't have a metamask wallet, it's very simple. It's the way of the future. This art, you know, used to be made on cave walls, then came, you know, paper, canvas. Art is going to be made predominantly in the digital platform going forward. And a lot of people say that, oh, is that really art? They'd rather have somebody take a brush and paint it on a, on, on a uh, canvas. If you look at some of the artworks by this other artist called Deepo, I mean, the kind of complexity that there exists, the kind of layering that there exists, I mean, the argument is almost the opposite. Some people say that it's harder. I mean, you're not just having these profile, these profile picture projects that are part of a movement. But people, as another artist, is very popular in the uh, art space. And somebody I would highly recommend. But his artworks, you see, and people will say that that's far harder to create a digital art that people does than creating an abstract artwork on canvas. So the argument that it's easier to create a digital art is also not true. Because actually it can be very hard depending on the kind of art you're looking So it's the way of the future. It's, 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 all art is going to be in another five or ten years and we all going to be electric vehicles and so on and so forth. Eighty percent of new art that's going to be created is going to be NFTs. Just that, be aware of the research, not all NFTs will be successful. 
it's the same about you know in, in, in understanding good art or bad art. Be a collector. If you think that an artwork is not cute, it's not decorative, it has possibilities, and you like it, you like its aesthetics, collect it. I mean, who knows what the price may be five years down? But just don't follow a momentum price action because God knows where that is coming. And of course, please contact us for any queries. We will help you set up a MetaMask wallet. Uh, that's your wallet. Uh, we will have access to it. And we will also give you a free participation NFT directly airdrop to you that moment. So we get you started on more NFT space. That's it for my